Tonight, we focus on a Valley nonprofit that's been helping Native Americans in the Phoenix area for the last 40 years. Native American Connections provides behavioral health, affordable housing, and community development services to thousands of families and individuals each year. Here to tell us more about the organization is its president and CEO, Diana Yazzie Devine. It's good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, Native American Connections, give us a, a better definition. Well, we, as you said, we were founded 40 years ago to serve the Native population that was moving into the Phoenix area at that time. Uh, unemployment rates were high in tribal communities. They didn't have access to higher education. And so you saw this uh, migration of Native American people coming into Phoenix. And uh, when they got here, they found that they were pretty socially isolated and culturally isolated. And so Native American Connections was founded at that time to really support the behavioral health needs and the housing needs of Native people coming to the Phoenix area, disconnected from their families and their culture. Indeed. Has that goal over the years changed, or is that still pretty much the target? It's almost exactly the same. We're, we're a much larger organization. Uh, we have 18 service sites all throughout central Phoenix, and we're still supporting Native American people. And right now, we serve all populations, too. And affordable housing in the Housing First model that the mayor was talking about, and serving the homeless population, supporting them when they have those needs that they have around substance abuse, mental health issues, domestic violence. And so we still really uh, do pretty much the same thing. We use a lot of traditional healing practices too. I was gonna ask about that, mm -hmm. the culturally appropriate method of these kinds of services. Talk to us about that. Well, uh, you might be surprised if you knew we're actually operating uh, sweat lodge healing ceremonies right in the heart of downtown Phoenix. Interesting. Right on 3rd Avenue in Roosevelt. Two times a week we start the sweat lodge fire and in order to promote community wellness and healing, the total mind, body, spirit where a person really needs to be healthy in their mind, healthy in their body and healthy in their spirit, those cultural ceremonies are still helping to do that right in the heart of downtown yeah, Phoenix. Yeah, it, it looks like it. The, the importance of, of honoring culture and the importance of that holistic approach, is that something that was there from the beginning or again, something that developed? Well, it was, um, it was supported by the founders, but it was important by everybody else who came after that, knowing that those ceremonies have been um, anchoring and grounding Native people for thousands of years. And um, it is a best practice. You know, we always talk about how do we treat people in the best practice met method, whether it's research-based, whether it's successful. And, you know, those old practices are, have been around for a long time, and they really help support Native people in that holistic model of healing. Is there a way to quantify the results, a way to say, look, here, I can show you that the X, Y, and Z is really working better than maybe some alternative methods? Well, we can show that through the stability of people as they move through um, certain levels of care, and then they go into, uh, the mayor was talking about permanent housing. So if we can connect somebody who is probably homeless on the street, you might have a woman who is using methamphetamine, she was pregnant, she was gonna have a baby that would have been addicted to meth and had to go to the county hospital. Instead, she came into care. We were able to provide her, wrap her with healthcare services, house her, and then she went on to find permanent housing. We were able to provide um, job development services that help women re-enter back into the community. This woman is now, her children are going to, you know, enrolled in school. She's in stable housing. She's got a job. She's, you know, a taxpayer. And she's being supported in her cultural environment. Um, so many times Native American people will feel disconnected or lonely or isolated. And here they get to remain in that cultural community and feel that support right here in Phoenix. Now, it sounds like there is 18 locations, service mm -hmm. locations. And, and the, the idea of a one-stop service, kind of the, the big kahuna there. Uh, talk yeah. to us about that because that's, uh, that sounds okay. like quite the deal you got going. In 2005, the Phoenix Indian Center, Native American Connections, Native Health, and now People of Color Network, we came together and said, you know what, our people are having a difficult time trying to find these services. They're not people that have isolated problems, but they're people that have, when they come in for health care, they also need jobs, they also need housing. And we said, well, why don't we come together and we found a building on Central, it's 4520 North Central, 
right across from Central High School at the light rail stop at Campbell sure. and Central. And now we have seven nonprofits all operating out of that same site so they can get job services and dental services, medical services, behavioral health, and um, there's an alternative high school for Native American youth. And so it's, it's a center where they come in, maybe looking for a single service, and they get wrapped in a variety of services. My goodness. Uh, it's, now, the operating budget I read was reported at somewhere around $8 million or so. Is relatively accurate there? It's about $9 million. $9 million. Over $9 million now. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how are you getting that money? How are you raising it? <laughs> well, I think we have a really good strategy. I think we have a very diverse strategy. Just like anyone else, you want your money to come from a variety of different places. Some of our rents come from, uh, I mean, some of our income comes from rents that people pay in our affordable housing communities. Uh, some of it comes from government grants. We're certainly supported by the foundations. Uh, there's a lot of foundations that are, hate to mention one because there's many that sure. support us. Um, so we have, you know, fee-for-service contracts with tribal communities, government contracts, but a pretty wide portfolio of the way our money comes to us. It allows us to be a little bit more stable if something goes away. You have other sources of income. And indeed, I read where you, you described it as an, uh, embracing the entrepreneurial spirit. Talk to us about that. Sure. Well, I think Native American Connections itself is we are one of the larger nonprofit affordable housing developers. So Divine Legacy on Central, which is right next door to our community service center. Uh, Divine Legacy is the first affordable housing community to be LEED Platinum certified. So we have the highest, that's a a green standard of certification. And so when we build our affordable housing communities, we actually build from the low income housing tax credit program. Uh, the, state, the State Department of Housing has issued future tax credits from the federal government and um, they're then um, allocated to our nonprofits or other developers and we sell them to investors uh, who need future tax credits. So we're actually building with private equity investment rather than using government funds or creating debt, you know. And that's how we um, create affordable housing and keep our rents low for families um, that, that uh, you know, want to live in a community where they can stabilize their family with low rents. That sounds like something that would have been a dream <laughs> about 40 years ago. And you've been with it the was. organization now 33 some odd years. I have been. Uh, you have to feel like you're making a difference. I mean, when you look back, you have to feel good about what's been going on with this organization. You know, our employees say that we are, you know, our organization, some of our services, they're life-saving services. We touch some of the community's most vulnerable people, you know, the uh, women that um, need to be in care when they're pregnant, domestic violence, you know, homeless youth. We have a, a, a homeless transitional program named Home Base for homeless youth. And, um, you know, we're out on the streets outreaching them and bringing them in um, off the streets into care. A lot of those kids were the ones that transitioned out of foster care and found themselves homeless on the streets of mm -hmm. Phoenix. And so I do. I, our employees, our board of directors, the community, um, I think we make a, we really make a difference in people's lives. We change lives. And where does Native American Connections go from here? Well, I think um, we're actually building another affordable housing community right downtown Phoenix at 2nd mm -hmm. Avenue and McKinley. Okay. And um, we're interested in, you know, in being part of the mayor's strategy about really making sure that, uh, that uh, the citizens of Phoenix have affordable housing that's on transportation corridors. So you're linking people. We're really um, wanting to support green building and green strategies and getting people to and from work uh, without having to have a car. All those things are important to us. We're part of the United Way and Corporation for Supportive Housing in the City of Phoenix on their Housing First strategy. So we're opening our first Housing First program so in thing, December. So things are happening. We are very busy. Well, congratulations yes. and continued success. Thanks so much for joining us. We well, appreciate thank you it. for having me.